1962, and only a single yard of bricks remain on the start-finish line. Qualification speeds are expected to be close to 150 miles an hour this year. And another single rear engine car enters the field in the form of Mickey Thompson's Buick-powered racer, driven by rookie Dan Gurney. All right, welcome to the 1962 Indianapolis 500. I'm starting in the middle of the front row. The grid is coming down. Parnelli is on the pole, and he is leading us down, the and the is race out. is on. Running of the Indianapolis 500. As I tried to shift up using the Y button, and again, that did not work because, of course, the shift button in this game is X. <laughs> so uh, early mistake on. Parnelli's starting to pull away, so we will set off in hot pursuit of him. Car number three 50 is laps. Back to the pit. And as you can Car hear, there has already been an accident. Trouble. Already been an accident out there. A lap one crash. Appears to have engine trouble. And car is the car pulling the out, trying car to make a move there that was Sutton no down to the inside. For car number 83. We were able to keep him behind us. Again, this is, is uh, this is very much an no endurance race. For car number one, car number five is smoking. Boy, more crashing in the back. In fact, there must have been a major crash because I only see a few cars back there. And it's, uh, there's car, a ton of cars coming out of the... Good Lord! Look how many cars were involved. Car number three. An absolutely monumental accident took place. Car number nine makes a pit stop. That was a slow stop Virtually car no cars 82. are on the car lead lap. We had a 1966 style first lap accident here car at the 1962 Indianapolis 500, stop. and that may have really shook up uh, things. Uh, look at all the parts and pieces. There's a wheel laying in car the middle of the of the stop. track. Good goodness gracious! Look, there's another car coming, rolling slow down this track here. Who is that? Johnny Boyd. There's more cars. What on earth is going on? An absolutely, like I said, monumental accident. Car and now, makes a pit that's, stop. that's a allowed pit stop uh, me and Parnelli Jones to essentially be the two guys leading this thing, and we're already in, in lappers here. That was a slow stop for car number 27. Got to be careful here with cars exiting the pits. Parnelli, oh, Parnelli gets hit! Parnelli's in the wall. Car number oh, I had to take to the grass stop. to avoid Daywalt, who had come out of the pits dangerously so. Now, Shorty Templeman takes the lead from me. And now Len Sutton is there. Suddenly, we've got a, a very intense race going on here in the traffic. Holy smokes. So Parnelli gets taken out in lap traffic coming out of the pits from the massive pileup that, that happened slow stop for car number on lap number one. And now we're running behind Daywalt, and we're losing positions to Marshman as well. Len Sutton's back there, Jim Rathman. Well, I said it was going to be in the qualifying video a battle between probably the top nine. The top nine are the only cars left in the race. I lifted off the gas there to let Marshman through. Again, like I said in the beginning of the race, this is very much an endurance race. And I'm going to treat it as such. We have to get around Daywalt here. He's really holding this up. Marshman ah, gets a better run off the corner. Let's see if we can draft with Marshman here. Down the back straightaway. Rathman going to stay right there. Oh, this is a very, very risky move there. But we got around both Marshman and Daywalt. Because Marshman got held up just a little bit on the straightaway and allowed me through. Thank you very much. Now I get to uh, set off in pursuit of Templeman. I had the lead for about a corner, but of course I had to avoid the, the accident, the spinning car of Parnelli Jones, and I was hoping that, uh, that uh, Daywalt was also not going to spin out. Boy, <laughs> what, a, what a start to this one. A wild, an absolutely wild Indianapolis 500. And we're only five laps into it. So now, again, we set off in pursuit of Templeman. There's lap cars up in front. 
big group of them, in fact. It looks like three or four cars. So I've just got to kind of settle into a pace here and make sure I don't let Marshman back into the race here. If I can keep it between myself and Templeman, they may be in for a really good shot here. The, uh, the winner of this race in real life was Roger Ward. He runs 19th right now. Doesn't look like he's going to be able to get up and challenge us. Of course, the defending champion is Eddie Sachs. Not sure if Sachs was able to get through the melee on lap one. We'll have to see as the, uh, as the scoreboard goes around. You may already know if you've been looking for Eddie Sachs on the scoreboard. We complete lap number six. Parnelli's actually only in third right now. So apparently his car wasn't too damaged after that accident. In the short shoot. Now Sachs is running 14th right now. The defending champion is 14th. And Parnelli clearly a very fast car. He is right there too. Look at that. Ooh. This is going to be a this is going to be a tough race. But again, I'm, I'm happy with second place. I didn't score any championship points at Trenton, the season opener. So this is kind of important. You know, you don't want a points race at the biggest race, the richest race in the entire world. But uh, the last year, uh, last uh, or 1961, the 1961 season. I, uh, I was involved in a crash very early on in the race, and uh, and I goose egged on points anyway. So second place would be would be just fine with me in the 500 after last year's performance. But we are absolutely catching this uh, these back markers up here. So this is gonna this is gonna get real wild here. I feel like I should stop getting on that apron. The apron is kind of causing my car to be a little bit unstabilized, destabilized in turn number one. And I'm losing position to Templeman and allowing Jones to start coming up closer, though he hasn't really been able to mount a charge just yet. But he is pulling away from the rest of the field there. So it looks like Templeman, myself, and Parnelli Jones are going to be the, the top dogs here. We shouldn't have to make a pit stop. I'm not expecting to make a pit stop. Hopefully we'll not need to make one anyway. I mean, if there is, I mean, if I do get into some trouble, uh, wall contact or contact with another car that damages my car, it'll be um, a good idea to come into the pits. As I realized again in the 1961 race, I pitted and actually ended up going much faster than I did uh, when I hadn't pitted. If that makes sense, because my car was so damaged that I was running very, very slow. And suddenly, once I had come in and gotten the car fixed properly, suddenly I was running much faster and was able to gain on uh, the rest of the field. But Parnelli is absolutely catching, and I'm following, falling further and further behind Templeman. We're going to need some help from the lap cars here once we get up to him. And that was a bit of a slide. A wee bit of a slide. I'm trying to get through the corners fast without using the apron. Because I feel like using the apron is really hindering me. But Parnelli is absolutely closing in real quick here. He's going to start getting the draft here in a second. And it may be, uh, may be curtains for David. David's second place anyway. Well, again, I, I'm kind of frustrated because I was like, I was leading the race for a split second as I drove through the grass to avoid the crash, and then uh, uh, things didn't work out too well. Yeah, here comes Parnelli. He's, he's closing in. Closing in big time. He is right there. I'm going to need some help from those lap cars. That is right on the apron. Yep, yep, that was a mistake, and it allowed Jones through. Wonderful. Well, Rathman's up to fourth now. Parnelli is absolutely flying. He is absolutely flying. I don't think I'm going to have anything for him today. I just don't know if I have the car to, to compete for the win. I mean, obviously, we're still in sight of the leader. All bets are not off yet. But Parnelli is, is pulling away. 
That was a weird move. That was a weird move. Why did he go up high like that? Ah. Well, it didn't matter anyway because I screwed up. I screwed up the corner. And Templeman is getting around the lap car, so. Well, maybe. Yeah, they're side by side. It may have slowed him down just a slight bit, but it's not going to slow him down enough to help me any, unfortunately. Alright, come on. Let's run. Let's run. Let's run. Very fast. Very fast. Giddy up. Alright, we are getting a sniff of draft off of uh, Parnelli there. I almost called him PJ, but uh, PJ Jones is his son. Uh, let's go... I feel like that was a good corner. I feel like that that felt that felt right. And Parnelli is having more trouble with lap cars. Ooh, he was out of the groove there. You saw him you saw him do what I've been doing and skidding the tires a bit. Can I gain on him though? Can I gain on him? Yeah, I gained on him. I gained a tenth. Every tenth counts. And he pulls out into turn number three. That's going to hurt me, because I'm going to get trapped behind Crow here. Lift off the gas, try to get a run onto the main straight here. Behind Crow, very fast, come on, inside. Down, past Crow, yes please, I'll take it, bye-bye. Thanks for playing nice, I guess. Ooh, I felt like that was pretty good. Even though Crow is trying to come back on me. You're a lap car, son. Get out of here. And back onto the back straightaway. We only lost a tenth to Jones in the traffic. But unfortunately, it was a tenth I didn't really... Well, I gained just, I just gained two tenths on the straightaway. This is interesting. This is shaving up to be a very interesting race. I wonder how if we're going to be able to stay this close the whole time. I mean, that is literally the top three you're looking at. My car, Parnelli's, and Templeman's. And if they start racing with each other, as long as I can stay close, it should be okay. I'm still in the rev limiter. Probably need a 1963 gearbox. I wonder if you can even buy parts from 1963. I know I could buy some 1962 parts in 1961, namely the gearbox that I'm using right now. But 1963 will also be a very interesting season because of, uh, spoiler alert, the uh, the emergence of the Lotus team with Jim Clark at the wheel. And yeah, they're on the horizon. Though the uh, rear engine cars haven't shown much so far. I think Gurney's mired in 18th. I think he was involved in one of the major pileups at the beginning of the race. The pileup that uh, was so large that Bob Jenkins couldn't actually name all the cars in the wreck. It was a big, big, the big one, really it was. It was most of the field. Lifting into turn number one. Just glide it in there. Try not to slide the tires too, because I am worried a little bit about tire wear. I don't want to have to make a pit stop. Or, uh, I don't want to have to make a pit stop if I don't have to. And I'm still losing position to Jones here. Just as long as... Again, I don't want Rathman to come up on me. I can I can hang out in third position as long as it takes. That was a little close through turn number three. That was actually wall contact in turn number four. All right, uh, well, let's uh, let's be a little more careful this time. Uh, Tried running the uh, the Michaela lotion line and it ain't working. And if you don't understand that reference, go watch uh, 
to watch Indy 500 pole qualifying, uh, the Fast 9 shootout from 2016, and watch Mikhail Lotion's uh, lap, or qualifying attempt. It is something to behold, that's that's for sure. That's for certain sure, as uh, Bobby Unser would say. In fact, Bobby Unser should be coming into this game very soon. I don't remember if his, if his rookie year is 63 or 64. But yeah, we're going get, to be getting Unser's and Andretti's and the aforementioned Jim Clark. A lot of big names coming, coming later on in this game. The Allison boys, the Yarbroughs from uh, NASCAR. So many people. And a little too much, little too much, little too much of the apron there. Yeah, that was a really bad corner. Just slid the whole th the thing the whole way around. As you can see, Jones is now out to a one and a half second lead over me. Rathman is falling steadily behind, thankfully. So the battle is not for uh, for my position. Again, just trying to keep them in sight. Keep them in sight. This is the important, such an important aspect of this race. So I have continued to lose time to the leaders, uh, but uh, there is a battle going on for the lead right now. Jones is about to overtake Templeman. So it looks like Parnelli is going to go into the lead here within the next few laps. As in fact, he's making the move right now. You're going to see a change over. I was sure. I'm almost certain. Yeah, there you go. So side by side for the leaders into turn number one or turn number three. And Templeman gets passed by Parnelli. Looks like Parnelli has definitely got the car to beat for sure right now. And uh, I continue to fall back. We're approaching the halfway mark of the race but I'm at least keeping a decent gap to uh, te uh, Rathman. So that's all I need to do right now. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to increase my pace. This may be the fastest I'm able to run. We're just going to have to see, especially as uh, lap traffic continues to play a factor. So we're coming up to start lap number 25. I continue to lose uh, place to Templeman, but I'm starting to notice that uh, we are going to be right on the limit of fuel here at the end of the race. If you'll notice, the fuel gauge is at exactly half right now. That means it's going to be empty by the uh, end of this thing, right at the 50th lap. So, I don't want to say fuel mileage, but this could end up being a fuel mileage race. And if that's the case, I don't know what's going to happen because I've never run a fuel mileage race in this game. Either the cars have had to pit or they haven't had to pit. So I don't know what kind of a race I'm running here. Or am I running a race where everybody is on the absolute limit of their fuel mileage? If that's the case, we may be in for a really wild finish because I just honestly don't know if my fuel is going to hold up. So we're just under a half a tank as we complete lap 25. So that essentially was exactly half race distance completed. I just don't know. And while fuel mileage is a concern, I'm also a little bit worried about my tire mileage. You, notice, you may notice the tire gauge over there on the uh, left side is uh, already beat red. And... Uh, I'm pretty sure the tires are definitely losing grip because I'm definitely losing uh, lap time. It's uh, harder and harder to get through the corners. You can't drive quite as fast as you were able to at the beginning of the race. Clearly, I'm starting to lose ground to Rathman. I may end up losing that position here in a few minutes. Uh, but we are coming up to just about 20 laps to go. So it is going to be... A lot of things are going to come into play here. 
But again, I, I really just want to stay out of trouble here. Get some points, you know, and finish the Indianapolis 500 in a good position. I think coming back here with a stronger program in 1963, I think will benefit us in the long run. Because I think, I think it's important to run this race, finish it without any major issues. Important for team building, good for career building, I should say. Understanding what it takes to win this race, it's very difficult. Because uh, obviously Parnelli is putting a, putting a show on right now, absolutely destroying the field. He of course would win the 1963 Indianapolis 500. So uh, in this universe he may end up winning it a year early. Templeman never won the Indianapolis 500. He runs second. He was running first early in the race after Parnelli had his coming together with, uh, I still can't read, Daywalt in the, uh, the short shoot there, the south short shoot. And yes, we are completing lap number 30 now, so 20 to go. coming up on a lap car here not sure who it is the blue car which uh, there's a lot of blue cars so it's kind of hard to be able to say well it's this blue car blue and white were kind of the uh, the colors du jour you get a lot of green oh well, you didn't get any green cars because it was considered bad luck sometimes the British of course uh, Jim Clark will show up in a green car um, but uh, these days uh, red white and blue were your colors of choice maybe some black Maybe some yellow, if you were lucky. And we are coming up on whoever this is. Ooh, a little bit of slide there. We do have to kind of get on it here because Rathman is catching. So it's going to start being a battle for third position here. I guess you could say a podium, even though it's really not a podium position. There is no podium in Indianapolis. How about that? That was really awful through turn number one. And Rathman is going to start closing in here. Now, how much I battle him, I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure I want to, especially if he's going to... Well, let's see. He's in the draft. Is he going to get a decent run here? Waiting. Now it looks like he lifted off a bit. So I'll turn it down in there. Take my corner. Ooh, he tried to go around the outside. He's still there. We were side by side there for just a second. I think he thought better of it. Backed off. I slid all the way through turn number four. And side by side with Rathman. He's going to get me this time. I don't think I'll be able to hold him off here. No, I was able to. That little extra straight line speed helped me out tremendously. I had to lift off, exit of the corner. With Rathman right at my tire tracks, he's going to drive around the outside. Bye-bye, Jim Rathman, I believe. Well, maybe not. We'll get in his draft here. Try to get around him. The battle is for third position here at the Indianapolis 500. Side by side. And that little extra straight line speed helped me. But he's got better corner grip, and around he goes. But uh, he is helping me catch this lap car. Ooh, that was very close there. Ooh. Ooh, I almost pushed up into him. Ooh. That was a bit spooky. That was a bit spooky. Did not uh, did not want to do that. That was I would my, my life flash before my eyes there. Thought the race was surely curtains there. Now the car slides through turn number one. It's kind of frustrating. Come on, get on the throttle. Come on. Get through the corner. Nope. Rathman may be gone now. Unless this lap car really holds him up. Which it doesn't look like he's going to do. 
Eh, maybe. 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 Now get under him, lap car. Get under him. Try to go around him. Nope. Nothing doing. And run very low. Actually, that was a pretty decent corner. But is Rathman still pulling away? I believe he is. Or at least he's keeping the gap that he had over me. Right out to the wall I went. Just a little bit of a breather on the throttle. Jack Turner is the car I've been chasing for the better part of the race here. The lap car I've been chasing for the better part of the race. Let's see if I can get him down the back straight here. Roll in behind him. Nope, he's got way better straight line speed, or at least equal straight line speed to me. Lift, maybe a little bit of brake to get the car. The nose turned. And it wasn't terribly great. Lift, 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 lift. Kind of feathering the throttle out of the corner. There we go. There we go. And we'll easily get around Turner. And now uh, Rathman is in uh, in the wars with a lap car who is uh, holding him up pretty bad. May be able to get around him. Nope. Rathman decided to drive around the outside of the lap car. Oh, I didn't plan for that. Lift. Come on, get turned. Get turned. Make the turn. Thank you. That's what I needed to do. Uh, who is this? Ian Cadman. Yeah, he is the uh, generic driver. Going fairly slow. In fact, I think he was a Trenton. Well, at least he made the race. At least he's made the first two national championship events. Good job, Ian Cadman. But I wish you weren't so slow, because you are holding me up a little bit. Let's see, we'll get this draft here. Pull down to the inside. Give him the bird, whatever. And around we go. So there's one more lap car up there that Rathman will have to negotiate. I just don't know if I'll be able to stay ahead of him. Lynn Sutton is now starting to close in. The uh, lap traffic did not help me very much staying ahead of Sutton. In fact, he was a front row mate of mine, along with Parnelli, who is absolutely decimating the field right now. We're down to a quarter tank, and we got 13 to go. Ooh, it's going to be very close. I really don't hope I don't have to pit when everybody else does. That will be a little bit frustrating. But honestly, it's the Indianapolis 500, and if you ain't clutching, you ain't coasting. And uh, I'm going to try to win this thing. I'm going to stay out to the bitter end. Unless I see everybody else coming in, and even then, I may decide uh, to go ahead and go for it anyway. Because I've already got zero national championship points. Zero times zero is still zero. I also don't know what strategy all the cars that crashed are on. If there were some fast guys who were in that crash who were able to get into clean air and just kind of run their own pace. You know, if we all have to pit the leaders, and they don't because they changed tires when they were wrecked. As strange as that may sound, they may end up being in the catbird seat. As I really got wide into Oh short no! Chain. Well, that was stupid of me. Said I got wide, I got spooked, and I hit the wall. Oh uh, no! They are three wide back there. They were for a second. Okay, now it's just gonna be. Now it's just bring it home. Now we are just in in bring it home mode. No more uh, no more trying here. This is going to be ten laps of absolute very careful and cautious driving. 
and Don Branson has actually moved up. Wow, he's moved up a ton of positions. He was in the very, very back. Now he's challenging for fourth here. He's a second behind me. In fact, this lap traffic has closed the field up quite a bit, as you can see. Thankfully, my car isn't affected too bad from the wall contact. Yeah, but Branson is absolutely flying. We're gonna miss. We're gonna lose position to Don Branson as well, I think. Now is he gonna play nice? You think Don Branson will play nice? He is really aggressive. That's for sure. He's all over the back of me. I think national championship points pay to eighth. So as long as I finish eighth, I'm good. Oh, he is right there too. Oh my gosh, that was like out of Star Wars, like Saboba coming up behind Danigan. He is right there, and I'm just gonna let him go. He's way faster, <laughs> and I'm not gonna hold him off for 10 laps. I'm just gonna hope that maybe everybody runs out of fuel. That's my one hope right now. And Lynn Sutton's still back there. I'm gonna try to at least hold off Lynn Sutton. Jack Turner is a kind of being a pick right now, which is actually helpful. Because it's, uh, he's a lap car. He will probably play, play nice with me, at least a little bit. A little bit nice. Nice enough. Oh, no, and now, well, Len Sutton got around him. Now, now we're battling for position. Now we're battling for position. Oh, I can't throw the block on him. There's nothing I can do at this point. The only thing I can do is try to do a crossover move. Ah, nope. Nope. With a damaged car, that is, that is not happening. That is not happening. Oh no, I'm losing so many positions. Oh, Bobby Marshman coming up behind. I've just got to keep, I got to keep Turner behind me, but not so close behind me that he gets held up in the corner by me. This is going to be really uh, precision business here. My tires are absolutely on fire from the fronts at least. Marshman side by side with Hulse, I believe. Is that for position? I don't know if that's for position or not, but Marshman is definitely struggling to get around the lap car of Turner. I drove it in really deep there. Really deep. And I got really wide there. Thankfully, I kept Turner behind me. And I got eight laps to go here. Come on, car. Come on, let's get back. Let's get to, uh, let's get to the finish here. Let's stay in the points. Hulse is going to get around Turner this time, I believe. I'm going to have to fight with Hulse here. There's nothing I can do except for run good lines and just hope. Whoa! 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 whoa. And hope they don't drive around the outside of me like that. Goodness gracious me. Oh, I'm in trouble now. Oh, I am in trouble now. I am getting swamped. I'm already down an eighth. Ah, car washed out. Tires are absolutely dead. The tires are absolutely dead. Rose got into the wall. Oh, I've got to be. This is this is seriously tense stuff because the tires, they're gone. Fuel is almost gone. Uh, the points are almost gone. This is uh, this a this is a bit of a tense situation here. Roll it down to the corner. A little bit of a little bit of a slide, but the car stayed relatively stable. 
McCluskey is now the guy who's going to challenge. Come on, Carr. Come on. McElreath. Oh, good goodness gracious. Actually, Rose is a lap car. Rose and Turner are lap cars, so that it uh, behooves me to keep them behind, I believe. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Get through the corner, get through the corner. Look at the, there you go. There you go. I can salvage one national championship point from this race, I believe. Come on. Come on, car. Stay out in front. Look at this battle behind. McElreath down to the inside of Turner. Got to keep Rose ahead. Oh, what are you doing, Rose? Get out of there. I got to lift off big time because he, because Rose decided to, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, now I'm absolutely fighting with McElreath. It's absolutely a battle between me and him. Oh, come on. These laps go so slow. They go so slow. Into the corner. Into turn number three. Ah! Come on, come on, come on. The car is obviously ailing. Obviously ailing. And now we're coming down. The fuel gauge is getting low. Oh, everything is, it's all kicking off. Okay, I got to give turn to the draft. Turn to the draft. McElreath is pulling around the outside anyway. Got to go to block. At least give him a little, a little bit of a fade there. The Scott Pruitt fade, I believe it's called. Oh, 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 trouble, problems, touched McElreath. He got mad, so he may come back after me here. Ah! Now I've officially lost that position. And now I'm losing position to McCluskey as well. Good lord. Bobby Grimm is there too. It's an absolute barn burner of a race. It's just too bad I'm the one who's falling behind, losing all the positions. Making it exciting. Remember when I said I wanted to make this all entertaining at the qualifying video? Maybe. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Bobby Grimm got into the wall trying to pass me. I'm going to be mad if I had damage and bad tires and everybody has to pit, including myself. And uh, I'm not able to take advantage of that. Well, McCluskey's making a move on uh, whoever that is. I've already forgotten his name. Got to wait for the position to change. McElreath. McElreath and McCluskey. That's why I got confused. It's very, very similar sounding names. Ah, here comes Bobby Grimm. Good lord, there's just they just keep coming. I thought there I thought there was a big crash that took everybody out. Apparently there's like fifty cars left in this race. Ah uh, no. I let Jack Turner back around me. Bud Tinglestad. He's uh, lap cars, I don't have to worry about him. Oh well well I'm definitely treating the, treating this like an endurance race, that's for sure. Now the Indianapolis 500 winner from last year, Eddie Sachs, is coming behind me. Can I hold Sachs off? I'm doubting that at this point. And way out of the groove. Yeah, this is going to allow Eddie Sachs through, surely. Nope, he went to the outside. That was a bit of a mistake on his part. If I do say so myself. Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and now the fuel light's coming on. The fuel, the fuel light is officially on. Um, um, uh, jeez, I do not know what's going to happen here. Well, I'm already out of the points. I'm already out of the points. I do not know what's going to happen here. Genuinely curious is that if everybody's gonna run out of fuel or not. Oh, this is scary. 
There's a car in the pits, but I think he may be out of the race. Let's see if I gain a position here. Nope. No position gain. And until those AI cars come into the pits, I am not... I am not going to pit. I'm eight seconds ahead of Dick Rathman, so I don't have to worry about him. I just have to stay on the black stuff, or the gray stuff. That's all I have to do to get a 12th place finish. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely going to have to work with the equipment next year. In fact, I may be investing in a car for the next, for next very next race. So I'm just not sure if my car is up to the, the Epperly is up to the task anymore. Already. Maybe uncompetitive. Fuel light is absolutely on as we're coming to the white flag. It is not even blinking anymore. It is solid on. Well, we're going to find out how far we can stretch it's the fuel. Final lap. Clutch and coast. Clutch and coast. It's happening again. Very apropos at Indianapolis. Oh, please do not run out of fuel. Just do not run out of fuel. I don't know what saves fuel in this game. So I'm just gonna have to just drive as fast as I can, and if it go if it goes, I'm gonna have to just coast it. Literally clutch and coast. All right. Oh, it's running out. It's running out. It's running out. It's running out. Oh, I cannot believe this. Oh, I cannot believe this. You have got to be joking with me. You have got to be joking with me. Oh, no. Oh. I cannot believe... Can I get out and push? The leader makes a pit stop. Oh. Car number 29 makes a pit stop. Well, there are cars coming into the pits. I don't know what's going on right Car now. Car number 96 makes a pit stop. Well, I'm going to ride around at five, 10 miles an hour. May have to fast forward this a bit. Car number. Oh. Well, there you go. Out of fuel. Retiring from the race in four, three, two, one. Wow. So, the Indianapolis 500 has been won by Parnelli Jones, Shorty Templeman in second, Jim Rathman in third, Don Branson in fourth, Chuck Hulse in fifth, Len Sutton sixth, Bobby Marshman in seventh, Jim McElreath eighth, uh, Roger McCluskey ninth, Bobby Grimm tenth, and Eddie Sachs eleventh. For me, not even on the second page, as you can see, Dan Gurney finished 14th. 24th position after running out of fuel. And uh, Lloyd Ruby didn't even make a lap. He was probably the first car that started that accident. Unreal. Uh, unreal. I cannot believe I ran out of fuel on the very last corner of the last lap. That is just... <laughs> that's that's an unbelievable. So the 1962 season... Clearly uh, very exciting and uh, unpredictable, and we'll move on to, I think, Milwaukee next. But let's head to the points table, see who's leading the championship, even though I have yet to score a point. So, after two races, Parnelli Jones has taken two wins in an absolutely dominating uh, performance so far. Uh, he continues to lead the championship. Only ten drivers have scored points so far. Templeman, Hulse, Branson, Rathman, Grimm, Ward, Sutton, McElreath, and Marshman. I continue to sit at zero points. So uh, it's going to be... Uh, Milwaukee will be a nice change of pace. How about that? I'm, I'm hoping that I can, can come back and start to claw my way back up the standings at the Milwaukee 100 after uh, two very disappointing races, both at Trenton and Indianapolis. So we hope to see you at the Milwaukee 100. Thank you guys so much for watching. This has been David Land on YouTube, and we'll see you at Milwaukee. Yeah. Oh.